Hi there. Can we talk about Gila monsters? In society, Gila monsters have a downright nasty reputation. Many Native American tribes believe that the Gila monster could do anything from breathing a deadly toxin from its breath, spitting venom, to jumping several feet in the air to attack its victims. Another myth even believed that the Gila monster did not have an anus and shit it out of its mouth. Even in contemporary society, we have not been very kind in our portrayal of the Gila monster. But is this lazy little treat boy really deserving of its nasty reputation? Let's find out. Named to the southwest deserts of the U.S. and Mexico, the Gila monster holds the undisputed title for the only venomous lizard in the United States. And before we proceed any deeper in this burrow the Gila monster is inhabiting, I am compelled to stop this whole video and explain something because I have heard people call Gila monsters a poisonous lizard. So here we go. The difference between venom and poison. I have had some younger friends tell me the difference between venom and poison is that poison only makes you sick, it can't kill you, which, well, someone hasn't heard of Socrates, huh, Aiden? Poison is anything that causes ill effect due to either touch or digestion. Venom must be injected into your bloodstream to cause ill effects. That's why those crazy rattlesnake cult guys can drink snake venom safely. So simply put, Poison makes you sick if you bit it. Venom makes it sick if it bit you. The Gila monster is carnivorous, but unlike its more infamous southwest neighbor, the rattlesnake, the Gila monster's venom is not located in its top teeth, but its bottom. The Gila monster releases its venom from its grooved teeth into its victim and will hold on for an excruciating amount of time, even starting to chew. While not fatal to any able-bodied adult, the venom can be excruciating. Oh, and there's no anti-venom. And as mentioned, Gila monsters live in the United States. So if you get bitten by one, enjoy setting up that GoFundMe page to pay for all those medical bills. Fear not though, the Gila monster is not an aggressive creature and will not bite unless provoked. In fact, Dr. Ward in 1899, featured in this photo, even stood the following on the creature's lazy reputation. I have never been called to attend a case of Gila monster bite, and I don't want to be. I think a man who is foolish enough to get bitten by a Gila monster ought to die. The creature is so sluggish and slow of movement that the victims of its bites is compelled to help largely in order to get bitten. Cocksucker. So how does the sluggish fail son get its prey then? The strategy of how the slow-moving Gila monster gets its meals is the same strategy a shitty political pundit does. It punches down, going after smaller and weaker prey. Gila monsters enjoy eating bird eggs, and despite their desire to go after low-effort, helpless prey are often seen climbing up cactuses to reach bird eggs. They have poor eyesight, and much like monitor lizards in Tegu, rely on a forked tongue to detect the scent particles in the air. Despite being venomous and having a forked tongue, they are not directly related to the monitor or Tegu, their closest cousin being the Mexican beaded lizard. During mating season, male heel monsters fight for the right to smash by engaging in wrestling, akin to that one erotic fanfiction you read out loud to your friends. And it was totally a joke, like, you weren't really into it or anything. <laughs> now check this out. The dominant male lies on top of the subordinate one and pins it with its front and hind limbs. Both lizards arch their bodies, pushing against each other and twisting around in an effort to gain the dominant position. Yeah, see, it's, it's funny. I'm reading that as a joke. <laughs> and yet, for all the shade I've thrown at this little fellow, the Gila monster is a shockingly impressive and resourceful lizard. The deserts they live in are some of the harshest deserts in the world, of temperatures on average in the summer being up to 100 degrees and getting up to 118 degrees. They also receive as little as three inches of rain per year. So how does the Gila monster survive in the wastelands of Fallout New Vegas? First off, the Gila monster's slow metabolism means it only needs to eat 5 or 10 times a year on average in order to survive. They're also a flexible animal that will change its habits depending on the seasons, being diurnal in the winter and nocturnal in the summer. In order to survive an unforgiving climate with a lack of water, the Gila monster has developed a very impressive way to prevent dehydration. It has a little canteen it carries around. Aww. Except its canteen is its bladder. 
Heal monsters store water in their urinary bladder, and instead of peeing it out like me after downing five beers in an hour, gradually absorb it back into their body over a period of weeks. Sadly, urban sprawl, deforestation, the illegal pet trade, and a general fear of this animal has made the Gila monster's population rapidly drop. In 1952, they became the first of any venomous animal to be given protection. Uh, yay? Their status is currently listed as near threatened, which means that they have the potential to become endangered. Which would be a shame, cause if they were to go extinct so you could have your fucking McMansion, who would be left to sing you to sleep? With their lovely Gila monster grunts. <laughs> That's all for today. Thanks for letting me talk about Gila monsters.